in Persona 3, when we went to that island and first met Igis, she was wearing some kind of a, like, a dress setup, wasn't she? So I guess Labrys was wearing the same thing in that, that scene. The girl puts those thoughts aside and returns to the aircraft. The mission does not end with taking the culprits into custody. In truth, along with defusing the situation, securing the safety of one particular passenger was her highest priority. This fact was not revealed to the SAT. The passenger was originally seated in first class, but would have been forced to move. The girl looks carefully through the restless passengers. It is not long before she finds the face she seeks. Looking relieved, the girl walks towards the passenger in question. Are you all right, Mitsuru-san? I guess. I didn't think you'd be the one to come. The woman who answers has long, shining hair that would make an impression on anyone. Even sitting quietly in her seat, her refined appearance makes her stand out. But I guess knows the woman well. In fact, I was surprised to be called on to deal with something like this. The suspects made no demands. What were they after? At first, I thought I was summoned because you were their target, Mitsuru-san. The higher-ups must have thought the same thing and panicked. Especially considering there's cargo on that plane they wouldn't want made public. Hmm. Wait a second, that cargo... Is something wrong? This hijack seems strange now that I think about it. They made their move before takeoff, which is odd timing. And they forced the boarding announcement to be stopped. I thought maybe it was their way of trying to pull it off with a small team. Are you saying that rather than a passenger, they were after that cargo? Hmm. It's true that no one would consider the unloaded luggage during a hijacking. I guess I need you to check on my things. Though if I'm right, it's already too late. In response, I guess instructs her team via radio to secure all luggage transport routes. Moreover, she requests a search to ensure that no cargo has been taken. Even if you're right, why would they be interested in your belongings? My usual cargo wouldn't be worth hijacking a plane over. But I was carrying something... sensitive this time. Normally, if they wanted it, they'd have to bypass a Carrillo facility security or attack the vehicle transporting it. But by doing it this way, they can divert the entire country's attention with a few model guns. Mitsuru smiles. I guess can tell that she's impressed with her audacity despite herself. Mitsuru-san's cargo. Sensitive belongings for a vacation. Ah, I understand. Hijacking a plane out of a desperate desire for undergarments. I want to die. This incident will surely go down in history. I guess why, like, were they like, hey, Junpei's not around, so we have to make I guess make this joke? Mitsuru's eyes bulge at the unexpected comment. What? You're jumping to conclusions. It's not sensitive in that way. Besides, my underwear is in this bag and... <laughs> Mitsuru, no! That's it. Enough about underwear. <clears throat> She forces a cough and steers the conversation back on track. More accurately, my cargo contained items from Ergo Research. My trip to Kagoshima was partly vacation, but also to oversee their transfer to Yakushima. The official name of Ergo Research is the Kurijo Ergonomics Research Lab. Both Mitsuru and Igis have many bitter memories associated with the name. A, a, a pall? A pale? What? Something is hanging in the air. But a radio transmission from one of Igis' team cuts the moment short. Igis speaking. I see. Understood. Mitsuru looks at Igis questioningly and she it's nods. As you suspected. They found that one of the boxes scheduled for transport has gone missing. I thought as much. With a small sigh, Mitsuru rises from her we seat. must get it back, I guess. The rest of the team can finish up here. I need you to come with me. I guess inspects Mitsuru's face carefully. Will you be joining the search as well? Well, I am personally involved, so yes. In other words, you will officially rejoin the unit and participate in this mission. <sighs> to be more direct, is it accurate to say that you are abandoning your vacation? Mitsuru sighs with some exhaustion. I guess it interprets her silence as approval. Then I hereby transfer command authority to you, Mitsuru-san. <laughs> I guess is like, I don't gotta be the boss anymore. Suck it, Mitsuru. Regulations state... That the member with the lowest serial number is to take command. And since you are member number one, the official leader of the security department shadow response unit, also called the shadow operatives. I wonder what number Igis is. It makes sense that Mitsuru is number one. The fact that the lowest number is in charge leads me, like... You would think, oh, Mitsuru's number one, so number two must be Akihiko. But that means that unless Mitsuru is in charge, Akihiko is in charge. And that's scary. 
So, like, I guess I could see I guess being number two, but I also, like, I guess was like, oh, wait, I'm supposed to be in charge at the start of the mission. So, I wouldn't be surprised if instead I guess was like number five or something, like somewhere around there. Uh, no way Junpei would be a low number. I could see Yukari or Ken being a low number. Maybe not as low as number two or three, but I don't know. Obviously, there are members of the Shadow Operatives that aren't Persona 3 members because I guess had a team of like 20 people in black suits. So maybe maybe there were some shadow some people that Mitsuru got in on the business who were like number two, three, four, etc. I have a feeling I wouldn't be able to enjoy this vacation for long. Traveling with cargo from Ergo Research suggests that her vacation was neither relaxing nor cheerful. But I can't allow anyone to be hurt again by the things we, the Kirijo Group, created. We'll get this cargo back at all costs. Mission or no mission, I'm making it a personal priority. Understood. I guess answers loudly and snaps off a police a police salute that she's finally gotten the hang of. I am I guess. My official name is 7th Generation Anti-Shadow Suppression Weapon. As my name implies, I am not human. I'm a humanoid weapon, essentially a robot. Though with the right clothes, a surprising number of people cannot tell the difference. I was created in a research lab owned by one of the world's foremost conglomerates, the Kreejo Group. I was made to exterminate a certain enemy. Probably shadows. They are called Shadows My- Okay, yep, yeah, I, I played Persona 3. Thank you. Given a mind to artificially develop a persona and a body of that of a human, can maintain a personality, a heart designed for battle, body designed for battle, endured some suffering because of my original purpose, I now have a place where I belong, somewhere I can make full beneficial use of my powers. That is the security of the Shadow Operative. Shadow Operatives were formed by Mitsuru. Our objective is to identify and resolve incidents with Shadows, do this by eliminating them. All of our members are Persona users or have similar qualifications. During operations, our guidelines state that the member with the smallest number has command. So, not all of them are Persona users, but I feel like this implies there are some Persona users that did not show up in 3, 4, or 5 that are part of the Shadow Operatives, which is really interesting if true. I doubt they ever go into it, like, at all in any of the games. The number that was issued was number five! Yo, didn't I say, like, number five or something? I am a genius. Though I'm not human, I am treated as a member and not a piece of equipment. Moreover, my number is in the single digits. It's possible that there will be missions like today where I must take command of dangerous operations. In other words, I am recognized as having the same life and dignity as humans. Because Mr. san and the others have such trust in me, I want to repay that with trust with results. There is another reason I am working my hardest on this case. Soon after the hijacking was resolved, the stolen cargo was identified. Its contents surprised me. The fifth generation anti-shadow suppression weapon, the unit named Labrys. She is one of my sister units. She was sealed over a decade ago and has been in storage with other artifacts ever, artifacts ever since. Did I say artifacts? <laughs> Labrys, a humanoid weapon just like me. It is possible that she has a heart, and if she does, I want to save her before she is misused. This is a mission, yes, but more than that, I feel it is a duty I must carry out. Oh my goodness, the first bookmark. Holy cow, that took forever. The next day, May 2nd. We wanted to pursue the vehicle carrying Labrys as soon as the hijacking was over, but its complicated route made it hard to track. Due to the sensitive nature of the cargo, it is difficult to set up large-scale traffic checkpoints. Fortunately, the license plate number was determined quickly, and we got a rough estimate of its destination. Our headquarters were moved to a police facility. Mitsuru-san and our team are sorting out the situation to plan for an operation. And the interrogation of the suspects? It's begun, but all of them are claiming that their memories at the time are very foggy, so they've been sent in for evaluation. The psychologists who interviewed them think it's possible they're not lying. So none of the five have any memories of what happened during the hijacking? Normally that would seem preposterous. There may have been some hypnotic effect, but even then... We're dealing with someone after materials from Ergo Research. They'll likely be very well informed about shadows and the mind. Knowing that, it doesn't seem so strange. It would also explain the extreme lengths they went to to create a decoy. What else do we know? Another team member answers Mitsuru-san's question. Since the cage storing the fifth generation is too large to transport by personal auto, we narrowed our search to large vehicles that left the airport. That, combined with the testimony from our observer and data from the transmitter, allowed us to pinpoint the vehicle in question. The police are already pursuing it via the end system. This is the most recent photo. He hands the tablet to Mitsuru-san. Inaba area. Wasn't this the place where... Yes, our routine investigation last year rated the potential shadow activity in the area at level 4. 
It seems that the culprit in this case had prior knowledge of shadows after all. If that is true, we must use extra caution. Many people do not know about shadows, that they are enough of a threat to possibly destroy the world. Then again, I experienced that for myself three years ago. If someone is trying to manipulate them, we must prevent it at all costs. Let's talk about the stolen fifth generation unit. I guess, as the seventh generation would be her younger sister. A sister? My older sister? I'd like to know why she was sealed. Fifth generation anti-shadow suppression weapon, Labrys. The records show her to be the first model fitted with an artificial personality. So there's a sixth generation one somewhere out there that also has an artificial personality. And then four and older, they, they don't get to have personalities. They're just robots. In other words, she has a heart? There's no knowing if it was developed enough to call it that. She seems to have been made to gather test data rather than actual field use. What are her combat capabilities? She wasn't given firearms since her regulatory system was inadequate. So she was instead loaded with some kind of special equipment. Unfortunately, the majority of the records pertaining to her are missing, which means that's the extent of our knowledge. Special equipment? We also don't know why she was sealed. Is this Yuri? Yeah, this voice, this member in lab coat, I'm pretty sure is Yuri Lowenthal. All of the voices of random characters, like a second ago, I think it was, uh, what is it? Is, is Johnny Young Bosch the one who does Adachi and Narukami? I think was his name. I always forget his name. But uh, he was one of the members in the suit a second ago or whatever. So, like, I'm pretty sure for this game, they got the important voice actors who did the original voice acting for the characters. And then if they had any extra characters, they were like, hey, uh, Yuri and Johnny, as long as we have you here, like, voicing Narukami and, uh, and Yosuke, can you, like, can you, like, just... You know, ch just try and change your voice a little bit and voice these, like, eight throwaway lines that we don't want to have to pay someone random for. And then they were like, yeah, sure, whatever. We'll do it. So I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Because also, Kanji's mom is Igus' voice actress, isn't it? I'm pretty sure the only voice actors and actresses in this game, other than maybe, like, one or two extra ones, like Labrys, obviously, and then, like, uh, that guy from the from the government who was talking to Mitsuru. I don't think he was a repeat voice. But, like, all of the throwaway characters in this game are literally just, like, main cast voice actors or actresses that were like, hey, we don't want to have to hire someone else for this, so just kind of, like, try and mess with your voice a little bit and read these, like, seven lines for us. Many of the documents regarding the old Ergo research were lost, probably to cover up incriminating evidence. Man, it must be wild. This Yuri doing this voice sounds a lot more like Sasuke, just like a little, like, a little throatier. But uh, it's so different from Yosuke. We don't even know what she looks like. All we do know is that she was a life-sized android. We'll just have to find out along the way. Mitsuru Sen swipes her finger across the tablet a few times and shows it to an aide. I'll need these three individuals' cooperations. I'd like to join them in the field. Are you sure about this? Try not to make a scene when fetching them. Not all of them are part of our organization. The aide nods his assent and returns to his station. Ooh, I wonder if she's talking about Yukari, Junpei, and Ken in that instance, because three, and maybe like Ken and Junpei, or maybe even... She said not all of them, so maybe like one or two of them are part of the Shadow Operatives, but then like... I could see Ken being like, Ken's too young, so he's not in yet. He's got to, like, finish school or something first, because he was significantly younger than the others in the game, I think. Or, like, uh, I know Yukari is, like, an actress playing as, like, a feather man or whatever, so maybe she's like, nah, I'm out. Mitsuru san then turns her gaze on me. And I guess, frankly, I think we can assume that there'll be combat involved. Will you be alright with that? Though Mitsuru san doesn't say it out loud, I understand what she means. Our highest priority in this operation is to stop the culprit and mitigate any associated danger. Not to rescue Labrys. Of course, we will strive to accomplish both, but in the worst case scenario, we must consider the option of destroying Labrys. Ken is in the junior shadow organization, yeah. Destroying a sister unit, it will be a painful experience if she too has a heart. Oh, thank you for your concern, but I'll be fine. I will do my duty. Mitsuru-san says nothing more and silently well, nods. Once we can confirm our target is headed to Inaba, we'll depart at once. May 3rd. As we get ready to depart for Inaba, Mitsuru-san and I go over last-minute details inside the police station. Mitsuru-san is absorbed with the issuing instructions over the cell phone she is holding. Pessimism seeps into my heart as I wait. I begin muttering to myself. 
Will we be able to find Labras? My sister? Hmm? Mr. Hassan's surprised voice makes me realize how unlike me these doubts are. Will we be able to save her? Isn't that what you really want to ask? <laughs> Don't worry. As I mentioned to Akihiko, fighting Labras is not our priority. The reason I formed this shadow operative team is to save lives. We will find her, whatever it takes, and bring her back. We can do this. Yes. I'm sorry to be so pessimistic. Those feelings you have for Labras? You should tell her when you see her. I will. Friends bound by trust are irreplaceable indeed. I hope that Labrys will become one as well. Eventually, the preparations are made and our limousine departs on its journey to Inaba. That evening, we are in Inaba now and traveling down a midtown street. Though it is called midtown, it is very different from an urban environment. It is a quiet, rustic road. The vehicle we are targeting is easily discovered. The transmitter that was attached to it when it left from the airport is, luckily for us, still active. But the vehicle has been abandoned and the cargo is gone as well. To trace it further, we must learn why the culprit came here. Specifically, we need to know the details of what happened last year. Though this was already assumed, so we have a plan. Mitsuru-san orders the driver to park nearby. However, this poses an unexpected problem. Our vehicle is a long, black, eight-door limousine. It'll stand out in this countryside town no matter where it's parked. Mitsuru-san, our activities are supposed to be undercover, correct? Yes. For undercover missions... It will be necessary to keep all personnel and vehicles from being noticed. Right. Mitsuru-san, may I say something that I've been meaning to say for a while now? No. Understood. <laughs> Rejected. All I told them was to give us a car with enough space. Wherever we go, people peer into the windows out of curiosity. We avoid the public eye as much as possible and finally park in what looks like a site for vehicle disposal on the outskirts of the town. Um, our contact has arrived. I then notice a middle-aged man in a gray suit standing outside of the window. I recognize his face. He is one of the three collaborators Mitsuru-san contacted before our departure. Oh, okay, so she was getting a hold of Kurosara, and he's not part of the Shadow Operatives. That makes sense. I scoot over to the door and open the window. Oh my. This was not our designated meeting area, yet he has discovered us. Suddenly, something not unlike exasperation or disappointment appears on his face. You want to know how I did it? Ahem. <clears throat> A cough interrupts us. We appreciate your cooperation, Detective Kurosawa. Mitsuru-san gets out of the vehicle and slightly bows. Three years ago, when we were still fighting shadows in secret, Detective Kurosawa worked as a police officer at a nearby police box. He believed that our intentions were good and supplied us with certain conveniences under the table. His job made this risky, but he always acted on behalf of what he believed to be just. He said this many times while supporting us in secret. He's a strong man, one who always acts on his beliefs. But now our organization has official, official government sanction. He can now cooperate with us without being considered a dissident. In fact, now that Kurosawa's prior actions are justified, he's been promoted for his expertise. I have heard that he is now a plainclothes detective working at a central precinct. Long time no see, miss. And I guess, was it? Indeed. It has been a while. Kurosawa-san fixes his eyes on Mitsuru-san and me. It is faintly awkward. We are both dressed for combat, and I am not wearing any clothes to cover my true oh, form. Sorry for staring. A humanoid weapon. I was skeptical when I heard, but seeing you in person doesn't leave any room for doubt. I'm sorry that I kept it hidden back then. <laughs> it's all right. It would have caused more of a headache if you'd gone around looking like that. Hearing him say that, I cannot help but smile. Seeing you laugh like that makes it harder to believe you're a machine. I shouldn't make you stand while we talk. Please, get in. Ah, oh, sorry. I haven't seen you in a while, so I had a lot to say. Mr. Hassan asked Kurosawa-san to collect information on the serial murder case that occurred in the town last year. When background investigations were carried out across Japan at the end of 2011, this region showed high readings of shadow activity. But although it was investigated, there were no effects apart from slightly unnatural weather. Then again, what if something happened that was just too hard to detect? Mr. Hassan suspects that the serial murder case was related to these shadows and asked Kurosawa-san to have the local police force share their reports. We could have requested them directly, but what we wanted would not be the surface information found in the investigation records. There are limits to what an unofficial unit cloaked by authority can do without a direct request. I found out quite a bit regarding the case you had me look into. First, I reviewed the report on the incidents from last year. One of the suspects mentioned the word persona. I lock gazes with Mitsuru-san. I wish I could lock gazes with Mitsuru. So what went on here last year? It's probably related, but I wasn't done there. Parts of this guy's testimony were even more outlandish. If you can take what's in the record at face value, 
it seems Persona users can enter TVs within the Inaba region. Enter TVs? What does that mean? Just what it sounds like. You physically stick your body into the screen and go inside. He claimed there was another world in the TV, and dropping people inside it was the method behind last year's murders. This all sounds rather absurd. I'm surprised it was included in the police report. I got in touch with the detective in charge at the time and said the same thing. Apparently the report was filed by a young partner of his at the time. He'd entertained the wildest testimonies like this one. He sounds like quite the oddball. If this was what really went on, the police would have had no chance cracking it. But that Detective Dojima is one shrewd guy. Even with all the supernatural hocus pocus surrounding the case, he caught the culprit. Kurosawa son sighs. He seems to be tired. That's all I have for you right now. I should be going. I doubt either of us has time to reminisce over the old days. <laughs> it's funny though. I thought the fighting was over, but you guys surprise me every time I see you. Thank you very much, Officer Kurosawa. Uh, why don't we at least see you off? Oh, well, that's all right. I've got my own car. I doubt my department would appreciate your tastes. <laughs> If I ever showed up for work in something like this, I'd be the talk of the force until the day I retired. He opens the door and exits the vehicle. He gives a short farewell and leaves without turning back. Mitsuru-san, this could be bad. Our sense of social aptitude is in question. Ugh, can't deny that. Um, what should we do now? Uh, yes. First, we'll need to test the claim that Persona users can enter TVs. Hearing this makes me realize something. Although I had called it a vehicle disposal site, looking around, I can now see there are also household electronics, like refrigerators, discarded here as well. In a corner is a stack of TVs. There is a discarded TV over there. If the environment does not matter, we can use it to test the phenomenon. I voluntarily get out of the vehicle, 